Well, Orica is the biggest maker of explosives in the world and one of the oldest. Its beginnings were in the Victorian gold rush in 1874, but though its products are used for traditional mining and essentially for the coal industry, it also sees a future for critical minerals and also for one of the key byproducts from its manufacturing processes. That's hydrogen. Today, I caught up with Orica Chief Executive Sanjeev Gandhi. There's going to be a lot more of technology coming in, technology which has been enabled by AI, by 5G, and uh, digital uh, uh, technologies and solutions. And that's the reason why Orica just launched Orica Digital Solutions as the first and only end-to-end -end supplier of digital technologies to the mining industry. All we are trying to do is enable our customers to transition into the future. OK, so is it simply a case of finding the resource, you know, sticking in the explosives, getting out as quickly as that, or is it going to be more targeted? Is that also part of the environmental story for the future? Absolutely it is. It's, it's a bit more challenging than, uh, you know, the traditional ways of mining because the critical res resources, critical minerals, future-facing commodities by nature are deeper in the earth. They are in more difficult geographies and they are harder to find. So it starts with basically trying to find where the resources, and that's where the geology or the ore body intelligence offering that Orica has comes into play. And then it's all about you know targeted blasting because uh, you know by by nature these products are rarer, they are much more expensive, so you do not want to have too much waste. So reducing waste, reducing your footprint, reducing the usage of water and, uh, and energy, all of that feeds into the ESG value proposition of these products. Because obviously the end consumers, for example, the automobile industry, will ask about the footprint uh, of the entire activity which is going into the finished product, which might go into a car battery. So the, the way we mine in future is going to be much more sustainable and it's going to be much more targeted. OK, but then even to create the raw material for the explosives, which is the ammonia that you will make at Kooragang Island, say, just outside of Newcastle, that's the raw ingredient to be able to create hydrogen in the future. So there's another, you know, sort of, if you like, green element that's going to come into your business in the future. No, absolutely. Look, I mean, we are enabling the world to transition into a low carbon future. We have to ensure that we also transition our own operations. Now, we do chemistry. We consume carbon. We consume natural gas as a raw material to make ammonia, to make ammonium nitrate. All of these are critical ingredients that will go into the fertilizer industry, into the food industry, as well as into the resource industry. So it's our responsibility that we do this in a responsible way. So one, one potential opportunity, obviously, for Orica is to manufacture green hydrogen and green ammonia, not from natural gas, but from water. So that's a project that we have been operating with, with our partners, Origin Energy and the Port of Newcastle. And uh, the intention is over the next couple of years to start manufacturing green hydrogen in Australia. So you say the next couple of years. Tell me about the science. Tell me about also the, 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 the way in which it's cost effective to be able to do that short term and then in the long term. Look, short term, the costs are significantly higher because I have already a fully depreciated asset that I'll have to shut down and invest in a new asset, which is a hydrolyzer, to make hydrogen. So that's a new capital investment. The second challenge is obviously it has to be fired with renewable energy, so wind and solar. So that's the other piece of the puzzle that I have to then uh, you know, find a way to, uh, to resolve. And then in the end, the cost of green hydrogen is significantly higher than what I make traditionally today, which is called grey hydrogen. Now, we need a mechanism to bridge this, uh, this gap so that this green hydrogen is cost competitive so that it can be consumed by Orica and by Orica's customers. And that is why this new hydrogen fund where the government has offered $2 billion to support the industry is very critical. So Orica has already made an application of interest. And as soon as we get some clarity, I'm ready to go with my investment decision. Oh, that's interesting because there's also some who make the argument that maybe the investment is best made in the United States where they have the Inflation Reduction Act where there's hundreds of billions of dollars of support available for companies that have the technology and indeed that's now been opened up to Australian companies. Absolutely. Look, we are competing here in Australia with nearly 270 billion US dollars that goes into the IRA in the US. So now that's a, that's a, that's a big competitor there. But I think there are very few places in the world where you can make green hydrogen in a cost competitive environment. Australia, luckily, is one of them. We have enough wind, we have enough solar energy, and we do not have and we have land. So it is possible for us to be cost competitive, but that's going to happen over a period of time as the technology matures. Initially, we need support like the IRA in the US, and I think the $2 billion fund is a good starting point for us. But the fact of the matter is that if you do get that support from government, your investment decision is made much easier to produce green hydrogen here in Australia. 
absolutely much easier, much sooner, because I'd like to start producing as soon as possible. Because as you can imagine, I'm the biggest consumer of hydrogen in my own network. So for me, it's a matter of producing cost-competitive green hydrogen, putting it into my factories and making green ammonia out of it. I'll tell you what, Sanjeev Gandhi, great to chat to you. We'll do it again shortly. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate that.